Drexier from Drex Factor Poi sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. Today I want to talk about anti-spin flowers and specifically how to clean up some of the bad habits that I see people tend to pick up with them. I've got five specific things that I see pop up frequently with both my own students as well as people that I see posting online. And you know what? I'll bet they can help you out with your anti-spin flowers too. Before we dive in though, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Becca Beckonen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. Anti-spin flowers are one of the most distinct and recognizable poi tricks of the modern era. They're almost like the kickflip of poi. We create anti-spin flowers when our hand traces out a circular path, and the poi spins in the opposite direction in the same plane. They're frequently but not always performed in wall plane in front of us, but some variations are performed at our sides in wheel plane instead. They're kind of a rite of passage for many poi spinners. In-spin flowers may be a little bit more intuitive and easier to learn, but anti-spin flowers have a much more exciting appearance with sharper, narrower petals and are a must-have for many, if not most, tech poi tricks. I've taught a lot of people how to perform anti-spin flowers over the years, and because they can be so challenging to get down, it's also pretty common that people pick up some bad habits as they learn them. So I want to share with you five tips based around the most common mistakes that I see people make that that will hopefully help you improve your own anti-spin flowers too. One note, in this video I will be focusing on anti-spin flowers with four petals. I know there are other variations, but I wanted to keep things focused on the most common type of anti-spin flower here. If you'd like me to do a follow-up on triketras or other anti-spin flowers, leave me a comment and let me know. If it's your first time here, check out my playlist on learning poi during the COVID-19 pandemic and get started with poi on the ground floor. And don't forget to subscribe. So let's dive in. Tip number one, explore volume. Since most of us start learning poi with butterflies and weaves, we get kind of used to keeping our hands within a comparatively small area, which is not that shocking because between typing, cooking, or using a remote control, that's really a space within which we're likely to keep our hand movements anyhow. But it also does not serve your flowers at all. Frequently when we keep our arms cramped into a tight space, it can be hard to tell for sure that we're even performing a flower. But if we allow ourselves to truly explore the volume around ourselves, all of a sudden those flowers take on a completely different character. This is going to take a little bit of training to get comfortable with, but there are a couple things that you can do to get yourself more comfortable with it. First and foremost, practice this in a space where you have a lot of room to stretch out so you're not worried about hitting things. Then wrap the poi all the way up around your hand and trace out a circle with your arm completely outstretched. Try letting the poi out spinning in the opposite direction and see if you can maintain the feel of having your hand completely extended even as the poi is spinning. This may take a little practice to get used to, but it should start to bridge this gap. Another possibility involves visualizing the poi in a slightly different way. To do this drill, imagine that there's a giant diamond in front of you that extends from above your head to far out to your right side, down near your hips, and then far out to your left. As you spin the poi, try to move your hand directly between each of these points in a straight line. As this gets to feel more comfortable, try to bow those lines out a little bit and work to keep your arm extended the whole way through. One thing to look out for here is making sure that you don't pull your hand back inward in between petals. Lots of people are able to reach out for each petal but feel like they have to bring their hand back in toward their body center in between the petals. Work to keep your hand as far away from body center in between the petals as it is at the tip of each petal. Tip number two, reach high on the top petal. This one is actually so common that I'm not the only one to make a video about it. A lot of people will find once they start playing with anti-spin flowers that they're able to explore the volume to either side of their body as well as down below, but struggle to get their arm extended across the top of the flower. Which, again, is completely understandable. It's pretty rare that we have a reason in our everyday lives to reach high above our heads, so this is something that feels very outside the norm for us and can take a little getting used to. This is made even more complicated due to the fact that many of us are practicing in indoor spaces where we may or may not have clearance to fully extend our arms and poise straight up. I'm six feet tall or 183 centimeters and my ceilings are only eight feet tall. 
I bump my poi against the ceiling constantly. So how can we get used to reaching up high for that top pedal even in a small space? Well, here's a couple suggestions. The easiest option is honestly just to work on practicing your anti-spin flowers outside where you have all the vertical clearance in the world. Don't be shy about reaching up for those top pedals. It can feel a little alarming to have the poi falling from such a high point directly toward your face, so make sure to move your hand off to the side immediately after performing that top pedal to absorb that drop and keep the rest of you in a safe space. But if you have to practice indoors, it might not be a bad idea to drill your anti-spin flowers with your tether choked up a little shorter. It's not unusual for me to wrap my tether around my index and middle fingers or hold it in such a way that the tether goes across the palm of my hand. With this arrangement in mind, really stretch to hit that top point. Perhaps dare yourself to try and tap the ceiling without fear and see if that gets you to reach a little more as you're going over. One final note here is to try and make sure that you're not shrugging as you go high. See if you can get your hand to reach up without taking your shoulder with it. It's both better for your shoulder and it creates a more pleasing line with your arm. Tip number three, hitting points, not beats. Another one of those bad habits that we pick up when we start spinning poi with butterflies and weaves is the tendency to unconsciously keep the poi spinning at a regular beat. This isn't a big deal when we play with tricks in a small space, but as soon as we open things up with flowers and especially anti-spin flowers, that tendency to focus on keeping the poi spinning at that regular beat frequently comes at the expense of getting proper pedal placement or having conscious control over how the poi spins at all. All anti-spin flowers are what I like to refer to as minimal beat patterns. That is, they look better when the poi is spun as few times as possible through them. But how to gain control over that regular poi beat? Honestly, I think that could be an entire video in itself and may eventually become one. But in this particular case, I think it's best to go back to fundamentals. Namely, training with linear isolations. Linear isolations involve moving our hand from side to side of our bodies and letting the poi head poke out once as the hand moves to either side. Since my dominant direction of spin is clockwise, I have my poi head pop up my center line as I move my hand to the left and drop down my center line as I move my hand to the right. In both cases, I want my hand to kind of sneak past my poi, switching from the poi leading to either side to then allowing my hand to lead to either side. This can take a little bit of practice to get down. Not the least of which because you have to wrap your head around the fact that even though the poi pokes out when it goes up, it doesn't actually complete a beat when that happens. Once this drill begins to feel natural, you can move your hand with the poi head, up as the poi head goes up your center line, and down as the poi head goes down your center line. And at this point, you're performing an anti-spin flower, but more importantly, you've learned some control over when the poi does and does not complete a beat while doing it. If you'd like a longer explanation of this process with a lot more detail, I did a whole tutorial just on this alone that I'll go ahead and link to in the description or up in the cards if you're watching on YouTube. Tip number four. Don't add extra pedals. Let's be real, spinning the poi in the opposite direction that your hand is traveling in feels super weird. It's not unusual for people to try and make it feel a bit more normal by spinning the poi one extra time at one of the pedals. I frequently find this happens in the top pedals and it can be linked to not having conscious control over the beat of the poi as I outlined in the last section. People want to beat at every pedal so badly that they'll add one even if it's not supposed to be there. Fixing this one involves kind of a leap of faith, as well as changing a bit of what we're looking for at each petal of the flower. First up, there's a phrase that I learned in dance that definitely applies here. You are always arriving. Think that when you get to your top, left, bottom, or right, that that isn't your destination, but merely a stop along the process. As soon as your hand arrives at any one of these points, but especially the top one, it's already moving on to the next point. If you want to keep track of the downbeats, think of this as down, right, and left. Down, right, and left. Down, right, and left with the and happening at that top pedal. Another way to train this out involves abandoning the idea of beats entirely and focusing instead on the poi tagging points far away from body center. So instead of thinking of the poi as having a top pedal, left pedal, bottom pedal, and right pedal, think instead that you're trying to tag away from you up, left, down, right, with the poi only allowed to tag each spot once. If you see it spinning around to tag that spot again, move your hand quickly away from it. 
Even if you miss the next pedal, it'll at least begin to build muscle awareness of staying at each point no longer than is necessary. Before I share with you my final tip for improving your anti-spin flowers, if you're getting a lot out of these tips, I've got more of them for you. You can download my free PDF guide on my top five tips for improving your poise spinning over at my website at drexfactor.com. These tips cover everything from how to improve technique to fun exercises that'll test your poise spinning capabilities in new and creative ways. Download that guide at the link down in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching on YouTube. And now for my final tip, Tip. Tip number five, keep those side pedals high. Kind of similar to how we sometimes don't extend our arms upward at that top pedal, lots of people also keep their side pedals at their waist near the bottom pedal. The problem here is that the bottom pedal and side pedals all just kind of melt into each other, resulting in a pattern that isn't very pretty, and sometimes it can be confusing whether the intended pattern is even an anti-spin flower at all. This may take us a bit out of our comfort zone, but the answer really is here to realize that our side pedals aren't just at our sides, but are actually at shoulder level. For many people, shoulder level is about as high as they're used to their hand reaching, so it feels like a high reach. But when we spin anti-spin flowers with poi, we have to think of shoulder level as being the middle rather than the top of our flowers. Not just because it looks better, but also because many of the transitions we go into from either side of the flower, such as plane breaking, won't work if they're below shoulder level. To achieve this, really focus on arriving at shoulder height for each of your side pedals. Check yourself in a mirror if you have to. It'll probably be a bit of a shoulder workout at first, but the resulting shape is absolutely worth it. An anti-spin flower centered on the shoulders, so beautiful. And those were my top five tips for improving your anti-spin flowers. Which of these tips was the most helpful? Did you discover that you had a habit you didn't know about before watching the video? Would you like to see me do another video like this one on other kinds of flowers? Let me know by leaving me a comment. This video would not be possible if not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I'm on a mission to bring poise spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching on YouTube. There you can get access to a whole host of rewards and help me along in my mission. Do check that out please and thank you. If you'd like more tips, tutorials, and more for beginner poi tricks like flowers, you can check out a playlist of other videos like this one that I've linked to down in the description or up on screen if you're watching this video on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to get out and flow today wherever you happen to be. It's good for your body and for your brain. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Peace.